All right. Okay, all praises to Yahoo Elohim. This your boy, Pac Roy, K. Perez, Jow from the Rumble Room. And uh, to this evening, this afternoon, we have a, a invigorating discussion um, with my brother, uh, Brian J. Morris, who is Christian. Uh, we are going to discuss uh, Galatians. Now, I got to give a heads up for all the Israelites, for all you pro Paul Israelites. <clears throat> um, you guys know my stance. You know, you know, I, 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 I'm critical of Paul's work. So just a heads up, it may be psychologically punishing, you know. <laughs> so if you want to if you want to hit the door now, that's fine. But if you are into hearing um, uh, a different angle, an alternative angle, if you're interested in why um, um, why Hebrews are critical of Paul's works, um, stick around by all means. Um, uh, as we stated before, we're going to be discussing Galatians. I'm not sure if I mentioned that before, but we're going to be discussing uh, Galatians, the purpose and e efficacy of the letter to Galatians. Okay, so um, my Christian brother, Brian J. Morris, is arguing in favor of, of the efficacy of Galatians. Uh, we're going to discuss the purpose of it um, and get into some more details. <clears throat> um, um, and, and, and me, I'll be, pro I'll be providing some counter arguments. Okay. So, um, sit tight. Um, I'm going to get this, try to get, uh, an image on screen so everybody could see something other than a black screen. One second. Boom. Here we go. All right. Let me see if I could, uh, just share this screen. Um, doo -doo. I think that's good enough. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> okay, bro brother, J brother Brian J. Morris. Um, brother Brian, um, it's my understanding that you are uh, an evangelical Christian. Yeah. Well, I'm a Judaic Christian. Oh, okay. Could you could you explain a little bit so we so everybody's up on game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I accept um the totality of the entire, uh, you know, biblical canon from Genesis to Revelation, the old and the new. I think oh. they are cohesive uh, one to the other. And, um, you know, the correspondence from beginning to end is, you know, pretty much unequivocally irrefutable. So, you know, mm -hmm. I, I consider myself a Judea, yeah, Judeo Christian. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, okay. So when you say Judaic, when you say uh, Judaic Christian, what, 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 what that's, I, I, you don't hear that too often. You hear evangelical Protestant, you hear evangelical Protestant, you hear Pentecostal, you hear Baptist, you hear Kajic, you hear A&E. A &E. What does it mean to be a Judaic Christian? Well, I mean, you know, if, if I had to, you know, categorize my work, <laughs> which is what I don't do, but um, if I were to categorize it to answer your question, um, I would say I was an an orthodox, um, you know, holiness. Um, how does guess, that how does that distinguish you from the average evangelical Protestant Christian? Uh, well, I mean, you know, ultimately, my my view on this is like that's where the deception comes in, you know, because we are so divided because of these six, you know, there's over two, two, what, uh, 40,000 six within Christianity alone. And, um, the, the word clearly says that we're all supposed to be on one accord. So, you know, I try to, I try to stay away from that. Um, what so is it, what, what does it mean to Judaic? Why throw the Judaic in there? What does that mean for a Christian? Um, well, you know, you, for my work, Go ahead. Go. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. What you was gonna say? I was gonna say. Go does ahead. that mean? Does that mean you believe you're an Israelite? Does that mean you you believe in keeping the Sabbath? Does it, what? What is? Do you believe in not eating pork? What is? What is? Why the qualifier of Judaic Christianity? Because you don't hear that too often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or most definitely, most definitely. Um, you definitely don't hear that. And um, you know, well, I consider myself you know, um, Jews and, um, or the, the Pharisees and Sadducees were people, scribes that, 
they kept the laws, they kept the scrolls, right? We could both agree on that, you know, and um, mm-hmm. that th- those were, you know, the laws and commandments and statues of Yah- Yahweh of the Old Testament or the Tanakh, you know, Torah, you know, Pentateuch, or whatever. Okay. So um, I- I'm a firm believer of uh, the Old Testament, you know, I-, I adhere, I even use it. You know, in in a lot of my daily warfare, I I pray and I you know quote scripture from the Old Testament. I, like I said, it's cohesive to okay. the new. I just I just you know our views just differ when it comes to uh, the evolution of sin, um, and and Christ having to come because of the disobedience of the Jews, and now and I I mean even in Genesis we see that. You know, God had a chosen people. He gave laws to separate his people from the outside civilizations, but he still offered the privileges of the covenant, right, to the uh, to to the uh, stranger. Which so, is, uh, go ahead. so do you? So 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 do you? You believe in following? You believe that we have to follow the the Torah? Is that what I'm hearing, or? or yeah 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 like i say it's it's i, I believe oh, okay. you know see 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 the, the thing is <laughs> see i believe that christ is god so so you probably don't believe that you know i believe i believe that the old testament has what 613 and you know the new has over a thousand right but mm-hmm. it's it's no longer it's no longer trying to keep the commandment by your action it has to be on the inward parts written on the table of your heart meaning um it it, i mean that that just solidifies the position that it's always been about the heart god god looks at the heart more than he looks at the actual law and commandment and we have demonstrations of that okay in order to be in order to be fair the the reason why i'm asking is because when when we're before we head into the the real meat of the discussion i and i appreciate you um um, first of all, b- being here, um, and you know, because I'm part of an initiative to to uh, in, uh, encourage um, cordial and respect, amicable dialogue between Christians and Hebrews. Um, but yeah, um, right. mm-hmm. and, but um, uh, I, when we're going into the discu- and I appreciate you providing the, the prologue because th- that's an excellent segue. Um, but I just want I just want the viewers to be aware of kind of your background and where you're where you're coming from. Now, I know we've had previous discussions in the Rumble Room. Quick side note, if you're not part of the Rumble Room, join right now. Lots of good, uh, engaging, uh, vigorous discussion. You'll grow, you'll, you'll be challenged, you, you know, emotionally stressed out, but, but give it a week or two, you'll, you'll come out a different person and you'll probably right. enjoy all, you know, the, the challenge and all the drama that occurs in the room is, is it's pretty fun. Um, uh, we're going on a, a a year anniversary in the room so we've been arguing and fighting every day for about a year if you're not part of the rumble room by all means uh join won't hesitate to add you um in the rumble room uh we've had discussions and you've um you've kind of you know i i i take regular pretty regular aim at um uh you know like certain high profile pastors uh which include the likes of eric mason um, I have lots of engagement. I, I, I don't hesitate to tag Michael Holloway. Uh, <laughs> angry right now, you know, I'll give him a break. Um, but um, but you you you've expressed support for those individuals, and I know those individuals um, believe a little bit slightly different. They they wouldn't encourage us to to follow um, the law that was given to the Old Testament Israelite um, to the to the Israelites uh, back in the days of Sinai. But however, you know, it's all good. It's all good. Your, convic- <laughs> yeah, no, no, your, convi- no, no. your convictions are your convictions, and you're your own person. So, go ahead. Well, 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 let me let me clarify that really quickly. So, 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 my stance is not. Um, I'm I'm not I'm not pro. Uh, my assertions and, and my uh, my worldview and, and my my uh, teaching. If I was to to provide a a I guess doctrine, it would not be to tell you um, that you, you just have to follow the uh, mosaic law, like in, in, in a, in a sense of, um, you know, I mean, because Christ made that perfectly clear in Matthew five. So my thing would be following um, 
my, my stance is following the law of Christ, um, who is God, and, you know, getting into the, the logistics of that. Okay. All right. All right. So, um, if you, if, do you, would you mind, like, um, like what, 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 um, I don't want to put you on a map here, but what, at least if, <laughs> if you don't want to state what church you go to, what kind of church do you go to? Oh yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll state the church. Uh, my, my, I, I don't, I, I live in Atlanta now. I don't have a church okay. home here. I visit, right. you know, a couple good churches. Uh, All right. Shout out ATL. Yeah, man. Where, where they, you know, provide good exegesis because you know you're never going to ever find a perfect teacher or a perfect church but you can take what you know you can take and leave what needs to be left uh-huh, uh-huh. you know for your, for your for your own edification but yeah uh, so is it like definitely. is it like a is it like a like a like a, like a, like a baptist church is it a kajic a and e or is it like a like a non-denominational uh apostolic apostolic oh, okay. um okay. One, one one of them one of my aunt goes to one that's Baptist and it, it, it's, it's very different though. The reason why I like it is they're not very uh, in tune with the traditional Baptist church mm-hmm. um, setting and feel. It's, it's, it's really more of an apostolic feel. So I kind of like that, you know, because okay. Okay. It, it, it reverts back to the, you know, first century or, or, uh, orthodoxy. So, okay, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, so uh, let's get into it. Um, we have this uh, letter of Galatians. Uh, written <laughs> written by Paul uh, to the Galatians. Uh, we both agree it was written by Paul and not by anyone else. Um, yeah. uh, it was written, uh, records have it as being written between uh, the years 50 AD and 60 AD. Okay, so this is roughly 20 to 30 years uh, after the ascension of Christ. And mm-hmm roughly 10 to 20 years before the destruction the destruction of Jerusalem which included the temple where priests had been uh making sacrifices so we have Israel still um 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 observing feast days in the new testament we have including the followers of Christ and even Paul but we have the letter of Galatians. Um, we'll start out with your take on Galatians, the purpose of Galatians. What, what, what's your take on it, Brother Brian? Um, you know, Paul would be considered, um, I guess, a, a scholar in his, in his day. Um, that's why, you know, they, they would say the unlearned couldn't really understand Paul. But um, Say, say that one Paul, more time. Paul was what? Paul would be considered um, a scholar oh, okay. uh, um, in, in, in his day. Right. Yeah, so um, that's why they would, you know, say that, you know, if you're unlearned, you can't understand him, meaning unlearned, meaning uh, educated in our modern day terminology. So, hmm. um, you hmm. know, so, so, but, you know, I mean, basically, just to make a long story short, uh, Galatians is a letter to the, the, the area of Anatolia which would be, you know, modern day, I guess, Caucasians, I guess, Um, you know, and, you know, people that were not bloodline um, Jews, you know, and he was just kind of, you know, um, breaking it down that, you know, everyone has uh, accessibility to salvation now that Christ has came. And the book of Galatians goes into intricate detail that we should walk by the spirit of of God and then it also says follow the law of Christ in um I believe chapter six verse two. So um so yeah it's just basically you know just just breaking down how if you're under the law and you you go by the law you are still under the curse of the law. But Christ became the curse um when he died and resurrected, you know, so yeah mm-hmm. that's pretty much yeah. So so should one so, so should do you believe that Paul would tell his readers to um do you believe that paul in galatians um is telling his readers to not follow the law the sinai covenant law um no he's not telling you not to he's he i mean because we have free will of course you know um you can follow it if that's what you choose to do but he's saying that if you do do that it totally, you know, uh, is is contrary to the whole purpose of 
the Messiah coming to become the curse um, okay. that you may not be under the curse anymore. You know, um, we're, you know, we, we live, we're justified, uh, justified by faith now, you know, um, and, you know, mm-hmm. obtaining salvation, there's no law um, in the Old Testament uh, on salvation, but you have to have that in order to get into the kingdom. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, would you agree that, okay, so, so it seems like you're saying that Paul wouldn't, would, would Paul, would Paul, let me ask you instead of just saying it, would, would Paul encourage, if, especially in the, in the Galatia, in the letter to the, in the letter of Galatians, is Paul encouraging his readers to follow the Sinai covenant law? I mean, basically, okay, say, say, ask that one more time. Let me make sure I heard you correctly. Is Paul encouraging the readers of the letter to Galatians Mm -hmm. to follow the Sinai covenant law, Torah? No, 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 no. Not, not the the people that he is specifically writing the letter to. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, okay. Would you say that Paul is, so Paul is not, in, he's not encouraging. Uh, would you say that he is discouraging the readers from following the Sinai covenant law? Discouraging them? Um, like is, nah, he, is, I, is, he, is he saying don't follow the Sinai covenant law? Follow the law of Christ. Is he saying that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, 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 absolutely. I yeah, agree. Definitely, I agree. definitely. Yeah. I, I absolutely yeah. agree. We're we're on we're on one. We're on the same page. <clears throat> yes, sir. Yes, so, sir. So so for for a Christian, <clears throat> I see why that makes perfect sense for you. Why it makes perfect sense to, um, to hold to give um credibility to Paul's writings. I understand why you why you follow them because according to Christians, Christ came, he initiated a new covenant that replaced the old covenant, okay? And so yeah. according to Paul, no longer do we do we follow the old covenant because it's a curse and we'd curse ourselves, but we follow the new covenant because we're justified by the blood that Christ shed in his and being uh, crucified on the cross. Is that correct? Okay. That cor- okay. Did I get it correct? Or do, is there anything that I said that's objectionable? No, no, no. That's, that sounds, that sounds pretty, pretty accurate to me, man. Okay. Cause I want to be, I want to be fair to you. I want to be fair to you when I represent, you know, Christian idea. I don't want to misrepresent. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is all about fair and amicable dialogue. Okay. All right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And so, and so, as a Christian, I understand that that most Christians, by and large, believe in the infallibility of Scripture, meaning there are no errors in the Scripture. Would right. You, would you agree? I totally agree. Okay. So for a Christian, there's no reason to um, to question or to hold under skepticism any of the books that are in the Bible, including the works of Paul. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean that that that. Now, when you say make that statement, um, mm-hmm. it's it's pretty broad to say just that, you know. Because what do you mean? Well. I mean, there are small grammatical errors, okay. you know, when, when you get into the technicalities of the translations and the transliterations from the Mesoretic to, you know, the Great Bible, the five that came before the King James and then the King James, you know, and then the uh, implementation of the Apocrypha, then the taking out of it, like all of these different little things that took place throughout, you know, the generations and the formulation of the of the uh the holy uh uh the the uh, Kadesh Biblios um 
it's it's you know it, it gets a little more a little more technical, you know. But uh, as a whole, if we're in a sense of, you know, did any of that take away the validity the validity and the overall um, message and um, you know the the purpose of the text? I I would say, in my opinion, um, no. I, I would I would say that it's it's definitely inerrant in that sense. Okay, so would you would you, so okay, so do you you do acknowledge it sounds like that there were there were individuals who took Israelite documents and put them into a collection called the Bibles. Do you, would you acknowledge that? Uh, okay, uh, that's a that's a good way to put it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We we we, we would definitely have to. Um, I mean, we have to get very intricate on that part too. Because well, uh, what is is it true or is it not? Uh, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Say it again. Say it again. Hold on. Let me make sure because I want to make sure I, I get this hear this correctly. Say, say it one more time. If you don't Absol- mind. Absolutely. Um. Would you agree that there were men who took Israelite documents, scrolls? Mm-hmm. I'm talking when I say scrolls, I'm talking about the prophecies, the the Pentateuch, you know, books of the Law and Prophets, the Psalms, uh, all the rest of the writings, Ezra and my the whole the whole you know all the scrolls of the Old Testament that are that that we call the Old Testament, and then all the all the the writings, the Gospels, and the writings of the the apostles. Huh? Would you say that men collected these documents and put them in, would you agree that they put them into a book that we now call the Bible? Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Absolutely. And, and, and I, and I knew you, you would understand that. And I knew, I knew you believe that because you mentioned the, the, the addition of, of many books and how some were taken out. Um, yes. Right. And so we acknowledge that we also acknowledge that these men, they took it upon themselves to say that this is holy writ. Would you would you agree? Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Okay. All 66 in, in my in my um, worldview and uh, in my stance uh, from Genesis to Revelation, all 66 uh, are indeed God inspired. Okay. Are you are you also aware that at one point they had more than sixty six books that they did that they deemed holy writ? Uh yeah. Yeah. Uh there were there were actually there was more and less at, okay. at certain at certain points and certain times. But um okay. I, I, I per I personally believe as we evolved in our um technology and understanding, I think we're we're able to get closer to the original now than they were back then um due to the circumstances okay so at, at so at different times you have certain books that are that are you had more than 66 books that were considered holy writ by the by the by the christian church but then mm-hmm. after but then after a certain point they took books out and reneged and said, "You know what? These were these books are now not considered holy writ." Would you Would you agree that's what happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, with anything, we know that you know certain things have to meet a certain criteria, and if if you know if the Most High's word is to be His word, we know that He is you know infallible. So His word definitely has to be infallible. But we know the uh, the enemy was also at work during that time, um, because you know he's been at work since the beginning to to try to cause confusion and try to implement his his uh, deception as well. Um, So you know, um, just kind of yeah. So so at one point, we have books that are now in now in the apocrypha that that the church does not consider consider holy writ but at one point they were yeah 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 but but who who implemented that though i mean the roman catholic church right that was that was their that was their um that was their doing and then you know to even go a little further you know not to get off subject but i mean with the apocrypha it's pseudopigraphal meaning you know, it, I mean, we don't know the, the the people whose names are on those books. 
there's no evidence to that that you know uh, that displays they actually wrote that. So so that's so the church has 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 given the the label pseudepigraphal to these books. Are you are you aware of the King James sixteen eleven? I have a copy of it. Yeah, that's one of my study Bibles. Okay, you know, you do. You, would you would you agree that that is a Protestant Bible? Um, it is definitely a Protestant Bible. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we so in 1611, there were books that are that were in that that are not in your modern day King, King James Bible. Right. Um, these are two Protestant Bibles. And at one point, Protestants figured that there are some books in King James 1611 that aren't holy writ, but was considered before. And they took those, they, they took those books out. Would you agree? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And, 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 and as to why they did so. Do do would you would you would do you see anything problematic with the fact that um, the definition of holy writ or God inspired scripture is changing from the King James sixteen eleven to the modern day King James? Okay, ask that one more time. One more time. I'm sorry. Do you find it problematic that? The King James 1611 was was considered holy writ, um, and but now they took books out of that, out of that, and, and that they don't consider it holy writ. Do you find that problematic? Um, it, to me, it would be problematic only if um, they took. If, if they if, if the the motivation behind taking it out, you know, from my understanding and my research and study, they took it they took it out because you know certain things were very weird and strange and a contradictory contradiction. Now, don't get me wrong, the apocrypha has a lot of truths too, you know. Um, from my understanding, you know, like the apocrypha, the Book of Enoch, these books were written by possibly written by people that were either Jewish or knew the tr Jewish tradition, but yet also it seems that some of the, you know, outside civilization's customs or B Babylonian customs were also intertwined into the, the teachings, you know, Satan kind of crept his way in through some of these literatures and, um, or some of this literature. And, um, you know, that's what caused it to be kind of, a um, a discrepancy so well you know, well these um, these individuals these individuals they deemed books like the book of maccabees the book of second ezra the book of um uh, judith tobit they considered these books in in the 1611 when they first came out with the 1611 it was considered right. holy writ it was considered yeah it was considered god inspired but now right. the de but now the definition of holy writ and god inspired has changed from the kjv 1611 to the kjv you know, do you see right, right, right. that problem to be problematic because because ultimately it, they're changing the definition of what holy writ is well, I, I, I would, you know, I, I, I would kindly, you know, kind of disagree with that only, only Fine. because, yeah, yeah. And this is why, though, I would like to explain why really quickly. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah, sure. yeah. So, so the Textus Receptus was, you know, a, 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 you know, played a big role in helping to shape uh, the, the, the authorized version of the 1611. Would you agree to that? Um, I'm, I'm. <laughs> I know that there was different documents that they used. I'm not too keen on the ins and outs of it, but feel free to share what you know. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so Erasmus um, created the text, Textus Receptus, which was, was Latin, a Latin uh, term um, for, you know, um, for, for, for what you said, like Holy Writ. But we, we know once we take a closer examination of this, he, he had a limited amount of uh, manuscripts to work with to, to create this, as well as the, the 54 scholars that King James authorized 
to, you know, create the holy writ of the 1611 text, they had limited. Uh, if, I, um, if I could interject, if I could interject. Yes, sir, go ahead. I know that there were manuscripts used to translate the books of the Bible. What I'm right. talking about is the edition of the Bible. We're talking about after translation. After translation, right. we're talking about. When we have mm -hmm. different books, we have different books. In the 1611, we have um, more than 66, but I'm not sure how many there are. More than 66 books. But then mm -hmm. at some point, the church decides, hey, you know what? These aren't holy writ. Let's take them out. It kind of makes me wonder, well, what's your definition of holy writ? Do you know well, what their definition of holy writ was? Do you know how they, how they went about, you know, like, why did they, why did they change it? Yeah, yeah. Well, from my understanding, like I said, correspondence. Um, like uh, for example, I, I mean, I mean, I would have to literally. I mean, um, like I say, we're we're dialoguing now, but okay, yeah, yeah. It's, we can we can go back and you know kind of provide maybe on a post or something that the uh, actual. We don't have to. We don't have but, to let this. We don't have to let this get us get us hitched up. Um, <laughs> I, I just so so all all of this conversation up until now was to really sort of lay a foundation that for all the listeners that the Bible is a product of of human hands. Okay, now the church imputes um, you know the agency of God all from start to finish of its formation, and that, and that's fine. I'm not here, I'm not there to dispute that. I just find it a little bit a little bit um, um, problematic because. We have Israel who has who suffers um, decimation at the hands of Rome. Okay. And then Rome gets control of their documents, which which is what happens. It's what happens after war. You know, it's what happens when the Greeks ransack Egypt. They they take their documents. You know, it's all everything you know because knowledge puts you ahead. You know, if you if you if you're trying to figure a thing out, at, you know, from scratch. Like it's gonna take you longer to catch up versus if I have this book of somebody who's done the done the research and done the thought work, it sets me miles ahead of where I would be if I didn't have it. So, so we have the the Romans who who ransack Egypt, take their documents, and then later on decide that they're going to put certain, they're going to publish certain scrolls and 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 and, and, and not publish others. And then even in that initial document. If we, if we fast forward to the Protestant church, we have the publishing of more than 66 books, right? And then, and then at one point, they take the books out. At another point, someone decides we're going to put even, even less than 66 books because we have these black people in the United States who we kind of want to, you know, we, we, we kind of made them be Christian and we kind of want them to read the book, we do, but, but we want certain books we don't want certain books in there. So, so along the course of time, we have the addition of books, we have the subtraction of books, we have the subtraction of more books. <laughs> you know, like so, it's just a lot of a lot of human agency. And I find it, uh, just for the record, I find it a little bit strange that that we're just supposed to accept that this is holy writ without question. So that that was to really sort of. Um, kind of um, prime everybody, you know, the listeners as to why I'm critical of Paul. Now, if I can go into why I'm critical of Paul and you can, you can ask all the questions you want and, and pick me apart all you want. Now, now well, 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 really, really quickly, I just want to, okay. I just want to, I want to highlight something you just said really quickly, then I'm gonna let you go. Yeah. Now we gotta, we gotta understand now, um, <clears throat> your stance I, and I understand your stance. I do, um, and you're right. There's a lot of, lot of touchy feely stuff going on throughout translations. But um, saying that Rome took control as a means to kind of, I guess, discredit, you know, the validity of you know of course the topic we're discussing is paul uh, uh uh galatians which is the ninth book of paul i believe if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. to, to say that would kind of be um it it, it it wouldn't uh withstand scrutiny because there was criteria you know there, there was empirical forms of measurement to you know uh, go by correspondence to see as to what should be and what shouldn't be 
Um, Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Was was Rome was Rome uh, uh, a, an oppressor of Israel? Rome was an oppressor of everybody because they controlled. I mean, they were the dominant. You know um, that. You know, I mean, Greek. That's why Greek was the lingua franca. Because so, you know, so was was Rome an oppressor of Israel or not? Was Rome a, an oppressor of Israel? Of course, yeah. Okay, so, because and we and we know that in the time of Christ, that Rome occupied Israel, right? And they and okay. they they didn't let them have a king, right? Like okay, at that point, Israel hadn't had a king since before the Babylonian captivity i think was, was it zedekiah right. i, I, yeah, I yeah, recall yeah. correctly zedekiah yeah that's correct that's correct yeah, yeah, yeah. so and so the, the but, you know, but what the was that what, how would that like how would that substantiate your 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 stance though so we know we know the cut co- the covenant just a really quick the covenant for david was to always have a man on the throne so we know that that during this captivity this captivity was a real captivity brought on by by the father okay and rome rome is the was the was has has never released israel never allowed israel to be a uh, to have a king from the time that so if we're talking about during the time of christ christ did his early ministry and rome and israel was still under roman captivity and just before he left and even after they were still under roman captivity so they were ne- they've never been restored unless you believe that the ashkenazim today there are the are, are the restoration of the people do you believe that or do you not well th- this well before i answer that i want to address something you said prior to when you said that um there should always be a king on the throne you know oh. the, the the book of daniel um specifically daniel you know god gave daniel the actual prophecy and the vision of what was going to happen yes yes you are know, you referring to chapter two and chapter seven chapter seven uh I, I i i don't i'm not i can't remember all of it but yeah i, uh, I just so chapter two just, chapter two in galatians um describes the daniel's image with the head of gold, the arms of silver. Right, 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 right. Yeah, okay. yeah. The and then, and, and then yeah. chapter, and then chapter seven refers to the beasts and actually depicts the narrative of the Messiah coming back and and restoring the 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 nation, the elect from under the captivity of the beasts. Cool. Right? Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. 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 Yeah, so okay. yeah. So so we 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 get a we get a foretelling of you know, Israel not having the king even during Babylonian captivity when God, you know, revealed this, you know, uh, prophetic vision to his, his servant, Daniel. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so what I, for the viewers and just to provide some, um, you know, some perspective on the, to sum it up, we have, Rome, which, and you, I'm not sure if you, would you agree that Rome is the, um, Rome corresponds to the kingdom of iron and clay and also the fourth beast, fourth beast in Daniel's, in Daniel's prophecy? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, that, that, that part of the, the statue that, um, nobody, uh, I believe he said that nobody would overthrow them, that they would be divided from within or something like that, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Perfect, yeah, yeah, yeah. perfect. All right, so so we're we're in agreement so far. Um and so we have Christ during we have we have Christ living under the Roman captivity and then in 70 AD we have that that Roman government that that fourth beast, that kingdom of iron and clay come in and decimate Jerusalem, massacre all sorts of Israelites, and also um, um, <clears throat> um, decimate their temple. Uh, and then, but not only, but, but, but they're never overthrown. Rome is never overthrown. Rome is in, is in power. 
Right, 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 right. They're never overthrown. Matter of fact, it was 10 tribes um, unknown, some were unknown um, to this day, but mentioned, some were mentioned in the Bible. Um, a lot of these tribes were considered to be of the descendants of Japhat. Would you agree to that? Um, I, I, I would agree that, that the, that the, that the Roman government is, uh, it can, I, I believe it consists of many peoples, but definitely for sure the, the children of Japhet are, are part of it. Yes, indeed. Yes. Absolutely. So, so th- when we're thinking about the continuity of time, right, we have, okay. we have Christ ascends, Rome destroys Israel, but then mm-hmm. 300 years later, along the, along those years, they are having councils, right? And they're forming what would be called the Bible, right? So really the same, like, it, it's not like a new government is, like, Rome is still very much in power. Like, it's still the, you know, like, Rome is still an, still an empire. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So that same government that destroyed Israel now has their mm-hmm. documents, right? So, yeah, no. Well, that is debatable. How? That's that's debatable because I mean the reason why we have them is the the you know the 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 rep, uh, replication of many 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 copies. Um, some of some of the the the, the papyrus um, forty five you know um, twenty I think twenty seven a lot a lot of them um, were written by people who were just trying to con- continue um, the legacy of of God's inspired word you know and God made sure that uh, was intact so to say that they just had total control it, I would have to disagree. Well, so so the 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 state the the state of Rome, the state of Rome, became a quote unquote Christian state under the Emperor Constantine. Right, right. right. He was a Roman emperor, was he not? Yeah, yeah. But what what, okay. what was his what was his ethnicity though? I'm what, he, all I'm concerned with is the idea that he's a he's a, a, a agent he's a um, an official of Rome. He's a government official of Rome. He's a, he's an emperor actually. And, 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 right. Um, right. Yeah. But, but see, this is the thing though. See, when we get into the technicalities of this, it's, 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 Uh-oh. it's, it's a lot, it's a lot, um, it's a lot more to it than just him being a Roman official. Cause you know, there is, there is information that supports him being in of, of Ethiopian descent. That's because fine. The, I, that's fine. You know, I don't yeah, have yeah. a problem with that. I mean, it, it, whether, it, whether, it, whether, whether I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying you're right or you're wrong. I'm, I'm really, yeah, yeah. I'm really unconcerned with that at this point. Well, all, well all, let me, let me get to my, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me explain. Cause I think you may be, might be, in, in, you might be misunderstanding. Me. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. What we have over time from the, from the destruction of the temple and we have, we have all these documents that are coming out of Israel they end up in Roman hands, Roman government's hands, okay? But how, though? That's still incorrect it's, because the Council of Nicaea were, were African church bishops where they debated the divinity of Christ and the, the Nicene Creed was actually... They're still uh, under the sovereignty of Rome. They're still under the sovereignty of Rome. Yeah, but that doesn't mean nothing, though. I mean, well, you the, can, I mean, that's your sure. opinion. And that's fine. Okay. That's like, fine. Well, can you can you provide like some? Can you give me something like like a a, a primary source to support that them being of, under the sovereign government of Rome had had a uh, some sort of influence on um, the change of of God's inspired word. You do realize that the that the entire Mediterranean was under Roman control. You do realize that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get that, but I, I'm, I'm, All right. I'm, 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 yeah, yeah so, primary. So, so when you're an emperor, you rule an empire. Rome's empire controlled all of the Mediterranean, including Israel. Israel was a province of the Roman government. The Romans were occupying 
Israel. If that doesn't tell you sovereignty right there, then I don't, I don't know what does. Not only that, but the Sanhedrin, there's, there's reason to believe that the Sanhedrin was in collusion with the Roman government to sort of maintain rule inside Israel as a sort of support for the Roman government. So the Sanhedrin would rule the people, but under Roman sovereignty, right? Because even, even the Israelite people before Christ was crucified, they said, we have no king but Caesar, right? Even okay, though, okay, even so, though, so, even if, one, one last point, even the Pharisees okay. said, if we let him alone, he will, he will influence the people and, and Rome will come in and take our, take our place in nation, right? Okay, so okay, well let me let me let me rephrase. I think you, you misunderstood what I said. Um so basically that that's good. And I understand that, you know, the, the history of, 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 of that and everything, the historicity is is that's that's good. My, my my question was if 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 the influence and the control was an issue, right? If if Constantine and his his position, his th authoritative position, um, was uh, deemed to be some sort of crutch in cultivating or culminating the uh, the canon, uh, the, the 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 first one, which he uh, uh, I, I believe it was Eusebius, he he uh, ordered him to create fifty portable Bibles in three thirty one A D. So. Okay, who's, I'm asking you, who's, who's, wait, 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 who's wait, commissioning? Wait, 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 one second, one second, one second, one second. One, one, one second, this is my last point. Who commissioned so, it? Who commissioned it? Uh, Constantine, Constantine. Oh, so, the, you mean government, so, emp government emperor, Roman government emperor Constantine. He's committed. Okay, commi but, but, yeah, 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 that's, that's cool. That's, that's, that's not, I mean, I'm not debating that. This is what I'm asking okay. you. This is what I'm asking you. Why would he get two African church bishops to come and debate this thing that he controls. Brian, I'm not, con I'm not concerned about why, I'm not concerned about why any African bishops. The, the only thing that's really necessary to be mindful of here is that you have an mm -hmm. emperor, you have an emperor commissioning, okay. you have an emperor commissioning ecumenical councils to establish okay a standardized religion that's the point a standardized religion or criteria of a text when during the time of the ecumenical councils during between between the time that israel was you know was destroyed and the time that between the time that rome became a nation and the time that they came out with the first um, that the closing with the closing of the canons, there was lots of bloodshed because there are lots of different sects and different beliefs and ideas, and people were mm -hmm. pers and and people were persecuted and even murdered for not for not agreeing to the what's called church dogmas, right? And these things were established. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, I agree with that. Right. Yeah, so what's what's that. what we're seeing? in the ecumenical councils are a standardization of the Christian religion. They're saying, okay, guys, we're going to get the books that we agree on to be, to be Holy Writ. We're going to call it Holy Writ. And then we're going to establish the dogmas and the creeds that we, that we need everyone to believe so that they can be considered Christian to eliminate this variation of belief that's what a creed is for when you go into your church and you open that church pamphlet you have the mission statement and those missions and those mission statements are based on creeds that are pre-established by the church did you know that yeah i did know that but i'm i'm trying to yeah i'm i'm trying to understand because I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't understand. Uh, so my thing is, what your argument is? Why don't you understand? The the point of what you're saying is what, like, because I mean, I'm I'm trying to get you to to present to me, um, you so, know. So okay, so so the reason all of that means that everything that you believe now, that Bible that you look at, that church that you go to, what they uh -huh. teach, what they teach you, was the product of initially the roman now when we get to protestantism it, 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 
the compl the, the discussion is complicated, but it comp it's a little bit complicated because Protestantism is a it, it comes out of Catholicism. Luther, Martin Luther was a Catholic monk. Okay, Martin so, Luther is not the father of Protest. Protest, yeah, he, that's he is. Yeah, that was no, absolutely not. That is just a whitewashed, uh, regurgitated you know ideology but the the there were african coptic uh church fathers in the first second and third century that was doing i mean martin luther even made that clear in one of his writings so okay so I don't understand why you, yeah well well in 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 the west we be, we believe what we believe because of you know at least as history tells us uh, you can go deep right, into the right, documents right. if you want and his inspirations or whatever but we know what we know because Martin stapled that that uh, you know what is it the fifty seven thesis on the church Wittenberg walls or doors, right? So okay, okay, right. So but 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 and all that was was on a timeline. All of that came out of the Roman Catholic Church. So undoubtedly, like the the blueprint the um the the liturgical skeleton the um um the doctrinal beliefs are derived from the roman catholic church now there's differences there's some things that the protestant church doesn't ascribe to that the that the catholic church dictates and there was lots of drama in history that happened but but make no mistake that protestantism is the the child, the theological child of of the Roman of Roman Catholic religion. Um, so when we look at history and we look at how we got that Bible, how we got the Bible that we have now, that came as a product of Roman Catholic Church ecumenical councils, Rome. And so what what I what I'm trying to make the user the listeners conscientious of maybe even Christian listeners is that we're we're what when we open up this Bible we're seeing the product of Roman hands. It's not just Israelite documents. It's not just it's not just uh, just the law of prophets and the gospels and the writing of the Bible. We're reading how men Roman men men of the roman government who was opposed against israel formed a bible out of their documents so when we go in and we look at things we find inconsistent translations when we look at things that are added in there are lots of hotly debated issues because when we look at manuscripts in some manuscripts some things were in in some manuscripts some things were not. And so that opens up a conversation where you can look at the scripture and say, you know what, there's something in here that doesn't fit. Now, it, 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 for example, in, in the online community, the Trinity is debated, the deity of Christ is debated. Now, I understand for you, all of that's settled. It's not a debate for you. No, but, <laughs> but, but there are, there are, there is, because when we consider the history, when we consider that there are there were men and men who had very ambitious intents, they played a part in the formation of this Bible. So when you go in, you're liable to see things and read things that maybe shouldn't be there, because men with not the best intentions, you know, um, put it in there. Now, when we consider what Christians say, Christians say, oh, it's the infallible word of God. It's the product of God. It's inspired by you know God through men. Yeah, well, that doesn't mean that bad things won't happen. Well, sometimes God lets bad things happen. We see it in scripture, and we know that, that in Deuteronomy 28, he even said that bad things would happen. And he even said that he would make them happen. All right, so when, 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 last point, when we consider okay. the, just 30 seconds, when we consider, okay. when we read this Bible, and, and, and I look in, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you why I don't agree with Paul. And in the Christian mind, it's going to be like, well, well it's, it's there. Well, we just went through a history where there, that, that afforded us 
reason and warrant to hold what's in these between these two two ends of the book under under skepticism we can read them critically go ahead bro um okay yeah yeah yeah. i get it uh, uh, but to me it sounds like you know because you know we're gonna have to jump off here i gotta take care of some things and i appreciate oh. that you having me um this has been a, a great dialogue man but um i, I just you know yeah, yeah, most definitely, man. And I'd love to do it again um, in the near future. But uh, really quickly, um, as, as we conclude and, 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 and kind of wrap it up, um, it sounds like the issue is really not with textual variance and cross-referencing the uh, translations with you. I think it's more so um, your issue is with Christians in general, uh, the ideology of the Christian doctrine or uh, Christology. Um, and I think you know, it's more so because your argument is kind of um, self-inflating, you know, it's self-defeating due to the fact that we don't have an original Tanakh. We don't have the original Hebrew Bible. Um, I haven't said Bible, anything about it. I haven't said well, anything well, let, about let me, that. Let me, let, can I finish? You know, I, I let yeah, you yeah. talk off. No, 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 yeah. go ahead. Okay, go okay. Ahead. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we don't have a, 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 an original Hebrew Bible, right? So there were 72 Jewish scholars, uh, 70, you know, however many, 70, 72. Um, would you agree that they had to translate it um, into the Septuagint, right? Yeah, there are 72 scholars that, that's, that translated yeah. the Septuagint. What, what language did they translate it to? Uh, it, was, it was my impression that, they, that it was uh, done in Greek. Uh, Greek, right? Absolutely, yeah. because they yeah. were. Um, they wrote it for Ptolemy, who was a Greek ruler in Egypt, right? Exactly. Uh -huh. So, um, if if we were to say that about the New Testament, then that argument can also be said about the Old, because it was translated. We don't have the original, um, so we have to we have to go into we have to go into intricate detail. Um, you know, with, with uh, variants, cross-referencing, uh, the King James Bible and the... I'm not sure how any of that is relevant to the discussion right now. Well, well if you let me finish, I, I mean, I didn't interrupt you, so I'm just trying to... I'm it just, just kind of seems like you're going down rabbit holes, and I have to manage the discussion as the as the oh. host of the show. So if you don't mind, it's okay. Well, I mean, you know, the topic was the Book of Galatians, and you know, you have mentioned a hundred topics since we've been yeah. on. So after wanna... after after you leave, yeah. I'm gonna wrap, I'm gonna wrap it up. This is not gonna end okay. after you hang up. I'm gonna I'm gonna okay. wrap it up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Most definitely. So so yeah. So um. So my my thing is, you know, I I don't I don't feel that it's fair to us to say that. Oh, Christianity, you know, because you're a Christian, I can see why you feel like that or think that or, you know, if, if we don't have like, you know, um, unequivocal, uh, compelling evidence, primary sources, I mean, if, if you don't have anything uh -huh. that is just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, you, you kept saying about the Roman rule and all of this stuff. But according to my research and study, that that didn't do anything. I mean, uh -huh. We still have we, we we the amplified version of the Bible is is so like I mean it's 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 so congruent with some of some of the matter of fact to be what? to be honest with to be honest with you <laughs> let me ask you this let me let me ask you this hold on you're 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 going you're going you're you're going long you're going long for me let, wait, let, wait, let wait, me, wait, let wait, me wait, provide wait, some wait. let me provide some perspective yeah, all of that this 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 gonna this gonna kill it right here let, let me ask you this question <laughs> all right. Ask you this question. Go ahead. Do you do you possess a Bible that was not translated from the Masoretic text? Come again. Say that again. Okay, let me say it again. Do you possess a manuscript or a Bible that is before or not has has no affiliation to the Leningrad Codex? Was not you, translated. You just, you just mentioned, was not you just two different. Two different names. Listen, Brian, I don't, I don't know why you're taking us down. I don't even know why that question is important. It would help if you say why it's important. Because if you want to dismiss yourself, that's, that's fine. But I'll, I'm going to put it in perspective, and I, and I would hope that you would, you would listen in because all of this conversation is very relevant to where I'm going, okay? It is the reason why I hold Paul in, in, under scrutiny. 
Paul, yeah, that's that's good. Let I me understand fin- that. Let me finish. Let let me finish. Th- you, this way, you, you let me finish though. That's not fair, man. I mean, you just interrupted you're, me. You're I you're mean, you're taking us down a rabbit hole that that we don't need to go to. We don't have to talk about. We don't have to. T- I don't even know why that's. It. What do you what do you, what do you mean? We don't have to talk. You just talked about the Bible. The the Bible, the books that were taken out. And okay, so if, if, and, if, you know, if you like, just that, if you just rock with me for a second and trust me, <laughs> I'll I'll make it make sense for you because it sounds like you don't understand why. I've taken us down this path. Okay, well, so, you know, I, 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 so if you I, if you if you if you take time to listen, maybe you'll understand before you leave. So so the reason why I went into the history is wow. so is so that you can under so that you and the listeners can understand why I hold the Bible in in, in, in under scrutiny. It's you can hold it under scrutiny because it's not it's not just it's it's an oversimplification to say, oh, it's God inspired and you shouldn't question it and it's good. Sometimes God inspires bad things. And 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 I just we can see that in scripture and, and we can see how that's a possibility now. So when I go in and I question Paul, it's not a big surprise for you. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm telling you, so I'm I'm gonna say what what I'm what, you know, if you were to stick around, you'd listen, you'd hear that all the reasons why I disagree with Paul. And okay, can, you I, can, can you answer my question, though, real quickly? Before I'm you get go, into it. I'm not going to answer irrelevant questions. I'm not going to get into the Texas Receptus. I'm not going to get into any codex. I didn't, I didn't or, ask you. I didn't, or, I didn't, I didn't ask you. Because it's, I didn't it's, ask not, you. it's, it's minutia, and it's mm-hmm. not really no, relevant. No, 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 it's not, it's not minutia. It's not minutia. It's, it's very relevant, because if you don't possess anything that predates the, the Masoretic text, everything that you have and you understand was translated from that. Okay. What does so that even, have to even, do even, with the, Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Even the Old right, Testament. Even even the Old Testament. Tell me, Brian. Tell me why that is important to the central topic. I'm of trying the to tell you if you let me. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you if you let me. No, you're not. You're not. You're just you're just talking. Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Tell me. It's your your response should be. It is important because. And it should be relevant. I know, you, relevant can't, you can't tell me how to respond. That's not that we don't. That's not how we dialogue, man. Come on, man. Are well, you serious? No, no, because because you're getting ready to. I don't trust that you're going to keep us on topic. That do you do you understand what I'm telling My you? My brother, we haven't been on topic since you started. You've been rambling about everything but the topic. No, how can I've been, you say I've such? Been, I've been setting up where we're gonna go. You yeah, but it wasn't. It wasn't. It, 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 so yours is a setup, and mine is irrelevant. That that sounds very. That sounds very uh, unfair. Brian, you know? Brian, up up until this up until this point, I've been I've been I've been in, in involving your cooperation, your opinions, your approval, your consent. I've been I've been in step with you. You you're what you're going to do is you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna go off on, on the tangent and tell everybody why you believe, why I disagree, and you're gonna misrepresent what I believe, tangent, and then you're man. gonna take us you're gonna take us down rabbit holes that 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 we don't need to go to. And now it's not. To to. It's and very and quick so if you if you would all. trust me, if you would trust me to be a fair and gracious host, like like I would I would recommend that you really just for the simplification so people can understand understand you what does that have to do with what with with the central topic of discussion okay can i talk now I, i'm asking you i'm as the host okay. i'm asking you where you're about okay. to take us pre give us a preview of why it's important okay now from the beginning of this conversation to right this very second you have given me nothing but your opinion on the Christian doctrine in Paul's letters. I am You've giving you. You've wait, 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 wait. Can I? You see, there you go again, man. You just can I? Can I finish? If, if you're gonna, if you're going to say things that aren't correct, I'm going to interject. Oh man, this that's, is this that's not. This is that's this rude, is, man. This is, no, you got to get no. control of that, man. I, I didn't. I didn't do that to you. Brian, Brian, you're gonna, you're gonna. What you're gonna do when you, when you, when, when you dismiss yourself, you're gonna go back and you're gonna, and you're gonna listen to this conversation, and you're gonna, you're gonna realize you were very wrong about what I'm, how I'm managing the conversation. Listen, I've, I I've, I've let, you, I've let you talk. That's a okay. Lot. That's what, okay. What, no, we're I getting, not we're getting to a heavy point of contention, and you're starting to misrepresent, and you're starting to shift the topic of conversation. And I'm not gonna let you do that. So if you're not gonna, if you're not gonna cooperate, Brian, you can dismiss <laughs> yourself. 
So, so basically what you just said in so many words is if you don't respond the way I want you to, then you could just get off of my life, basically, right? Brian, Brian, I've been I've been fair this whole life. I don't want you to sh- to take the conversation down a rabbit hole that that's going to confuse my listeners. Pre, pre, nobody's going to get confused. I'm very descriptive. You don't you don't know that, and it's not your job to manage the discussion. I'm managing okay. this discussion for my listeners. If you cannot tell us why okay. what you're going to tell us is important if you can't give us a preview then i'm not going to let you go down it and you can just dismiss yourself okay. right now okay well I, can i can i tell you real quick it won't take but a second you ready if if you tell me if you tell me about what i've been what i've been telling you and you say something wrong i'm going to interject be, be, <laughs> what? be very be Are you very serious? be very careful about how you word it brian that's all oh I'm my saying. gosh that's not man it, it, listen that's not this is this, see the dialogue was good at first. Now it okay. is horrible. It is terrible. This well, is that's, terrible. Man. That's fine. I understand. I, I understand that you that you feel that way. Yeah, this is terrible because we we know that we we have to get into te- technicalities and the logistics of things in order to to depict what's wrong and what's right. When we're talking about the books of the Bible, is specifically the topic that we should have been on the whole time, which is Paul Paul's letter. We we use cross references and textual variants. We You're not talking about Paul right wait, now. Wait 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 You're wait. You're not wait, talking wait. about we, Paul. Yeah 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 yeah. But we we use <laughs> we use correspondence. You know what I'm saying? So I asked what is you, that? What you are you talking this? about? Oh, hold on hold on hold on hold on. Can I finish? If you let me finish, I can tell you what I'm talking about. You don't want to let well, me just finish. tell me. Okay. If 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 you if you please be quiet for at least thirty <laughs> seconds. <laughs> I can tell you. You know what I'm saying. Can you I'm, do not that for me? I'm not going to let you ramble senselessly oh, all, all right. over this live. Okay. All right, man. All right. I, I guess I'm not going to be able to, you know, just get, get to your assertion. Just get to your point and make it make sense. If it doesn't make sense, I'm going to stop you. And I mean, I'm going yeah, I'm, I'm I'm to ask you to make sense of it. That seems like a very rational, sensible thing to do. I don't know why you, why you have a problem with it. I'm trying to well, understand... I'm trying to understand you. Okay. Well, from the beginning of the conversation, you said you, you think Paul's letter to uh, Galatians is a contradiction. And you said you feel that way because of men's hands and Roman rule. That's wrong. All, the, that's all, the, all, wrong. The, all these different things. Wrong. That's, 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 wrong. That's, 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 all. that's wrong. Okay. You misrepresented my position. You can ask me. You can ask me. You want to ask okay. me? So in the in the in the in the in the post before we got on here, you you don't want to ask me. Your mic went out, bro. Your mic went out. Are you there? I see your I see your your screen. Okay, can you hear me now? There you go. There you go. All right. Okay. Yeah. So so let, let, all right. In all honesty, let's let's be real here now. Okay. You know, cause I, cause I, you know, I, I deem you as an honest brother thus far. So before appreciate we get on here, it. yes, sir, no problem. I appreciate you. So, so before we got on here, did you not say in the post prior to this live that you felt Paul letter Galatians, the book of Galatians as a whole, was a contradiction to the to the Mosaic laws and and you know what you believe and what you your stance, right? Did did you not say that? I did say that, but that's not why I brought up the history. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just come on, man. Let me, let me, let me get my point across. Well, you're asking me a question, and I want you to get it right. Like you, like I think you really should just kind of. I think you should just yeah. let, like let let me put it in perspective for you, so so you don't have to guess and get it wrong. My brother, my brother, my brother. You don't want. Cannot to. finish. You, cannot you don't finish. Want to. You don't I'm want just to. asking you. Cannot finish. <laughs> this is the church for been. the listeners. This is this is exactly the church's problem. <laughs> He's probably uncomfortable, and he doesn't want me. He's afraid that he might be wrong, so he doesn't want me to get the oh, idea. No, I, listen, I don't care He doesn't care want me to get the wrong. idea out. That's why he, 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 because he's uncomfortable. If he was comfortable, he'd let I'm me get the idea. He'd let I'm me get the idea right out. Now. This is the problem with the Christian church. This is why people are filing out in droves. Okay, well, can I finish? And that's, that's cool. Thank you for don't letting tell, us know. Don't make definitive church. statements about what I believe and then tell me, let me finish. I'm not going to let you finish you, something. You just, you, just said you, you just said you admitted to saying that you felt no, like but you said I brought you said I brought up the history in order to prove Paul. No, I did not say that. 
No, I didn't say that. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna listen to this discussion. History, again. history did not even come out of my mouth, man. What are you talking about? All right, right now I'm I'm pretty much convinced that a spirit is really just really co- just preventing you f- to from 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 letting me uh, let uh, make it plain for you. Like I want to make it plain for you. Now now I'm gonna use my authoritative privileges and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to remain silent so that you can oh, okay. you and the listeners can understand why I hold Paul's documents in critique because you have obviously have a misunderstanding. <laughs> so let me put it in perspective for you before you go. Okay. Or, or you can just go now and listen in and I'll put it in perspective with or without you. Are you okay? It doesn't matter. Which, okay. Whichever one you want to do. I mean, I can't talk anyway, so I so, might as well. I mean. Let me at least give you the information before I let you okay. go because you're okay. saying some very incorrect things. Okay. Um, so, go ahead. So, Correct me. So all of the history that we went into was to was to um, was to establish the foundation that anyone, not just me, has a right to question what is in the Bible. It's not this infallible, this infallible um, holy writ, as the church labels it. Like holy writ, what's holy writ is what is true, whether it's in the in a canon, in a canon. For the listeners, canon means standard. It's a, a canonization is a standardization. When you talk about the canon, the canonization of scripture, you're talking about the standardization of scripture. Standardization as a methodology is done to eliminate variance. They did it so that there wouldn't be a bazillion different versions of the Bible out. Okay. Now, now when we talk, when we consider that history, you have a right to look in Galatians, to look in the Gospels, to look in the, in even the Old Testament books and say, you know what, something's not right about that and not feel bad because you know why? Roman hands had played a part. It didn't just come out of Israel and they didn't just slap it together without any Roman agency. It has edits and, 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 and alterations in it. Now, when we talk about Paul, I don't think Paul should be considered um, 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 it, it, sh- it shouldn't be even considered or read. Now, I'm not saying that Paul never, never says anything good. There's some good things Paul says. But when we talk about um, how Paul uh, preached against um, circumcision, when we talk about um, Paul, the purpose of Galatians was to dissuade the Galatian um, church from following the Sinai covenant law. Wherein, and then in, in Acts 21, we have believers, you know, messianic believers, believers in the Messiah who are zealous for the law, who are ready to, to, to put Paul to death. And then Paul, Paul lied to get out of it. And he used his Roman citizenship to, and, and, and Roman security to get him out of the city. Okay, like when I, when, when I look at Paul's documents, there are things against the law and prophets. And me as an Israelite who believes that we are in the, the captivity, the last, we're still under Roman captivity. All right. There hasn't been, there hasn't been a new, there hasn't been a new covenant because Israel, I'm sorry, Rome, the last kingdom hasn't been toppled over. Right. So, so you just made up. Can I, can I just point out something you just said about Paul in Acts? Okay. Sure. The same thing that happened to Paul happened to Christ. So what's the differentiation of, of, because I mean, Christ was persecuted. Christ was, you know, always, you know, on trial with the Jews, the very people that he came from his bloodline. Can I answer that? Him. Can I answer yeah, that? Go ahead. What, it, what's it, the difference? It, it's, they're not the same because because Christ was a no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not talking about them. In, 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 in. Like, of course, they're not. The let Let me answer it, Brian. Let me answer it. The teaching. Let me answer it. Let me answer it. What's difference in the let teaching? Let me answer it. You yeah. talked about why you said they were both put on trial, but they're not put on trial for the same reasons. Christ was put on. He was unjustly put on on trial. Like no, no, can, no, 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 no. No, let me let me finish. No, that's, that's, let, that's, that's incorrect. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute you so I can get this out. Are you ready? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. It sounds like you're going to be quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm going to just go. I'm going to just go, bro. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go because this is, this is not 
This is no longer a dialogue. It's, this it's, is just no. I I want to answer your question, but I can see how you're uncomfortable right now because I'm. I'm challenging. not uncomfortable. I don't know why you keep saying that. I'm not uncomfortable. I'm perfectly fine. Sir. Okay, Brian, you an you asked me a question. Let me answer it. The teaching, though. Let me let me let me make it clear for that you. That wasn't your you question. Answer. You used you use the fact that they were on trial. You brought up the notion that they were yeah. on trial. Yeah, yeah, by Jews, by Israelites. They let me, were let me tell you, let me respond to it. Okay, go ahead. They weren't on trial for the same reasons. It's not the same. Christ was put under trial unjustly. Paul was put under trial for, for teaching people to forsake the law of Moses. And that's a, clearly what we see in Galatians. Did Christ forsake the law of Moses? No, he taught people to follow it. He was an average, average follower so, so, and astute teacher. So why did he say in Matthew 5 and 20 that unless your righteousness excel, those of the Pharisees and scribes, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven? And when they asked him about healing on the Sabbath day, which is work. because okay. I'm You're going into ministry, something else. Let's work. handle it one at a time, Brian, one at a time. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But, but, but you're one, saying one at a time. One at a time, okay. Brian. Okay. One okay. at a time. Okay. Okay. Okay, let me let me let me let me let me do one at a no, time. No, no, one at a time, Brian. You asked me about one 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 part of scripture. Let me address that and then ask the next. Okay. Right. Is that not reasonable? Yes, go ahead. Now, when we're talking about the righteousness of the Pharisees, do are do you see the Pharisaical sect as a as a as a um as the paragon of, of virtue of following Torah? Were they the, were they the best example? Sir. Were they Jews? That's the question. That's that's that that's the stuff that you're talking. Now you're being irrelevant, like you call me. Okay, let me let me why, let me why, let me explain you, to you why it is relevant. Okay, give me a chance to explain to you why it is relevant. Because okay. Christ said, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees, right? Let's get the scripture. Where is it at? And and scribes. He said, and scribes, which were the record keepers. You know the Jewish, the the the, the people who kept the scrolls and the laws and stuff. Let, let, let's get let's get it. Let, where is this? Is in Luke? Uh, no, it's Matthew five and twenty. Matthew five and twenty. Because there's a, there's a mistake that we're making here. Right? Okay. Like when when we're when we're talking about righteousness exceeding that of the Pharisees. We're not talking about a very high standard of, of righteousness. What? What do you mean? The Pharisees weren't good at following the law. They were hypocrites. It, 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 exactly. Huh? <laughs> exactly. Okay, so, so, so let's, get, let's get some perspective. It says, it says, whoever shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men to do so, shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. It's Matthew 5 and 20. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, Ye shall no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, now take a breath. You're, you're, this, is gonna, you read this is gonna trigger you. Let, let me explain it, Brian. Can, I know, I know. Oh, I know, I know how nervous, I know this is, this is, this is. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I know that's where funny. you're at right now. Can, can, can you read the next verse, please? Can no, you no, read the next that was 20, that was 20. I read 19 and 20. Well, we wanna now, get context though. That, that's why I started on 19. Yeah, but you got to go to 20 because he's talking about no, the laws. I read 20. I did. The law of Moses, right? See, no, you're, no, so, you're, Moses. you're so you're so keyed up right now. You're you so you you're you so on you guard. Wanna... You didn't even you're, you're you're busy thinking of a reaction. You didn't even hear verse 20. So <laughs> you don't so you don't you don't want to you don't want to implement what you stand for? Like, what? what? Come on, I mean, let's I, go to the Brian, next verse. I need, I, need you to, I need you to let me break this scripture down right now. Fight your okay, emotions. Break it, break you're triggered right. You're all triggered right now. I need you to just take a breath and relax. I, I'm not triggered. I don't know why you keep saying that. Okay. Well, just let me get to the point. Okay. <laughs> so he says, "For I say, I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees." Meaning, if you don't, if your righteousness 
if your righteous works doesn't exceed the Pharisees and the scribes, you won't. If you're just as righteous or less righteous than the scribes and Pharisees, you're not going to get into heaven because they're not setting a, an exemplary model of what, it, of what righteousness is. They're hypocrites. <laughs> he says, accept your righteousness, exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Ye shall in, if it doesn't, then you won't. Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you won't get into the kingdom of heaven. It makes perfect sense. He's saying, do better. He, he even tells them, he says, do what, do what these men tell you, but do not do, what, do as they do. He is telling his listeners to follow the law, not not follow the law. Is that what he's saying? Read it is, 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 is that what he's, he's telling his listeners to follow the law? Do, do you have a Bible in front of you? I don't want to want to. I do have a Bible. Go ahead. You can read it yourself now. Read it real slow for everybody. Can I, can I, can I, well, well can, I, can I read the next verse? Because it talks about if he's telling them to follow the law. Can I read that? What, 21? 21 and 22. Yeah, they're, they're cohesive. So can I read those? I don't know what it's going to do for the conversation, but go ahead. Okay, okay, okay yeah, yeah. Uh, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. Now, the, the significant word in this next verse is but. I don't understand why Christ would say but. I say to you, because the definition of but means contrary to what was said prior to. And then he says, I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Now, now this shifts the, the, the entire ideology of the old because now he's saying even just the thought of you or, or having an emotional feeling of being angry without a cause is just, is, is equivalent to you actually committing the act. Like this wasn't taught in the Old uh -huh. Testament. So how, 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 is, how is this... How, how, I mean, what, 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 how, how do we understand this from your perspective? Brian, you brought, you brought up, you brought up 20. Okay. I explained 20. You don't want to, you don't, you don't, you don't want to touch that. Yeah, well, you, you just moved, you just moved on. You just, you didn't even address, you didn't even address the, your own scripture that you wanted to take us to. Man, you just added to that scripture, bro. It, it didn't say none of that. It no, just no, said. No, I didn't. Said, I didn't add. No, I didn't. You, yeah, you added to it, brother. No, you I, did. I, the scripture says what it says. Brian, it's you you haven't Jesus. even addressed it. You haven't even addressed it. You just skated on to 21 and 22. I did address it. You skated on from your own verse that you cited. <laughs> Look at you. Okay. What's so funny? Uh, it, listen, you are funny, man. Listen, listen. Verse, it, it, let's, 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 let's go back even further. Chapter 5. <laughs> Chapter 5, verse... Man. <clears throat> Chapter 5, verse 16. Okay, says, verse 16. says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works. That they may see your good works. Let your light so shine before men <clears throat> that they may see your good works. You can just let that okay. breathe. Hold on one second. <clears throat> you just let that breathe for a minute. <clears throat> one second. You say wait it. You okay? I'm uh, I got dry, uh, dry throat. One second. You want to pray? Here? You there, brother? Yeah, I'm there. You want me to All finish right. the scripture for you? <clears throat> Not uh, sixteen. Well, you can read it if you want, but. Yeah, go ahead. yeah, go ahead. I can read it for you. Go ahead. Um, this this is uh, ESV. You want me to go King James or what? It doesn't matter. I'm reading out of the King James. Um, I think okay, most of our listeners read out of King James. If you want to read okay, both, let me, I, let, me I, go, I let me let me let me go to King James. Then let me um let me go to King. Uh, <clears throat> and I think uh, one of the one of the brothers are saying that you're coming through low. So I'm not sure if you uh, want to project a little bit louder or something like that. I'm coming through low. Yeah, one one of the hey, hey, hey uh, everybody in the um in the chat room, <clears throat> uh, can you give me a 
from one to five, five being the best, can you rate his rate Brian Morris's uh, audio, his quality? From one to five, five being the best, one being the worst. <clears throat> Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Okay. Is it was it isn't the isn't the doctrine of Paul to that works don't ju don't don't justify or works are no good works works are for boasting self righteousness. <clears throat> uh, no, depending on the context, we we like to deal with context. We don't just you know take things out of context that would be a contradiction to the word and make god's word a context so if i so if i can ask you what context is it good to let your uh sh let your light shine so that men may see your good works in what context is that good um well depending on what chapter and verse you're referring to, in this particular you know um christ is saying you know um let your light shine, meaning your life, your lifestyle. Let, let people see the way you live and the way that you carry yourself, showcasing kingdom character, which correlates with Romans and, and, and also substantiates what I said prior to about the whole Bible is correspondence to each other. Every book, every chapter, uh, you know, there's no separation, you know, because of nobody ruling or anything. But okay, you know, you're, you're going off on a tangent. Oh, oh, wait, you're going wait, wait, wait. off on a tangent. I, I'm, wait, I'm asking you. Can I I'm, finish? I'm asking you. I'm Can I finish, though? Brian, Can I finish? This, Brian, this is a this is a discussion, and I'm 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 gonna let you talk, but I'm not gonna let you. You're going you're going off, bro. Like I'm asking. Not, you, I'm not going off. <laughs> what? <laughs> How what? can you just interrupt me and say I'm going off, man? That's that's crazy. because because sometimes when people talk, they veer off into different topics. I'm asking you, like in verse sixteen. When when is it when is it good? You said depending on the context, showing works is good. Showing works is not good. I'm at Christ is telling us to show our, let our light shine so and show our good works. Now, when I see good works, I think of showing good examples of 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 following Torah, following the Sinai Covenant law. Now, you right. obviously have a different idea of that. And yeah, it, if, you, if, you, if you think if, if you think that Christ did not pre, was not referring to the sign of covenant law here, I no, need you no, to, he was not. I, I need you to I need you to prove it because in verse in verse nineteen I just, I just read it for you I just read it for you okay so in verse seventeen he says <clears throat> think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets I am not come to destroy but to fulfill part what of does fulfill mean? to execute to do to complete. Exactly. But listen, let me explain for you. When you go into Deuteronomy 6, there is a generational practice that, that Elohim commands us to do. He says, teach them to your children's children. He says, from Ver Deuteronomy 6, 1, he says, now these are the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord your God have commanded to teach you that ye might do them in the land where you go to possess, that thou might fearest the Lord to keep to keep all his statutes and commandments, and I, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, and all the days of thy life. Teaching the Sinai covenant law is part of doing the law. To say that at one at one point to preach the end of it or the replacement of it, that is that is 180 contradiction. That is a sin against the Sinai covenant law, and 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 Christ wouldn't be blameless if the, if he if he if he taught that. It doesn't end there. It doesn't end there either. I mean, I, I figured you had something to say, but if you don't, I can take us yeah. to. I could take us to the yeah, verse. Okay, go ahead. I did, I did have some. So you asked me about the light and the works. Okay, in this particular context, Christ is talking about your lifestyle, and then he goes further is to saying that you know until. Um, you know, he said, I come not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. Okay. That means he has the power to complete. Okay. That means he, he possessed the authority to complete. 
Okay, so then he goes further down the next few verses in, into detail as to what he's meaning by what he's saying. And that's why he says, you know, no, no longer doing the act. Now, even if you think it, if it's in your heart, it's your, if it's your heart's desire, that's equivalent um, to you doing it. Right. So that, that's just a higher standard of living. That's that's what the text says. We, we can't. We can't try to change the interpretation. We can't try to redirect it to, to make it mean anything else. That's what it says. And that's the context of the text. So I don't understand how you're, you're, you're confusing that with Paul saying works. Okay, no, okay. Paul, is talking about, Paul is talking about your works, trying to, 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 to like what you're doing in your stance, trying to say that your works is, is just, will justify you. Okay, you let's, know? Let's, let's take it step by step. Well, okay. you, you, you mentioned context, which is, is, a, is a very important word. Context is crucial, okay? When we're talking about uh, the teachings of Christ, when we're talking about who he's speaking to in Matthew 5, when we're talking about, um, when we're talking about the cultural context, okay? This is pre-crucifixion. And Christ is fulfilling the law, okay? What, when he talks about works, what is works, what do the Israelite people understand works to be? Now, the Israelite, I mean, if they're not, if they're not Christian Israelites or Jewish Christians, then if they're the ones that were, you know, uh -huh. always talking about, you know, uh -huh. the one, you know, you know, the ones that Christ was talking about that were hypocrites that were always trying to accuse him of, you know, doing what they were not doing, you know, keeping the law. So um, works to them would be something that they would have to continue to do, making them um, be subjective to the curse which Christ came to be. When right. When we say when when Christ says works and Israelites hear him say works. Works according to what in the Israelite mind? What works? I'm not an Israelite, and I don't have an Israelite mind, so I can't, I don't know. Okay, so if I can provide my take on that, okay? Go ahead. In Matthew 4. In if Matthew, I am, let me correct that. I don't know if I'm an Israelite. I haven't done a DNA, but go ahead. Well, well that's fine. That's neither here nor there. But right. um, when, when I hear Christ say works, I'm thinking works according to the Sinai covenant law. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, 25, Moses establishes what righteousness is. He says, right. and, and it, will be, it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all the commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. When we talk about sin, we can go to Deuteronomy 20, I think 27, 26. It says, cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. And all the people shall say amen. So that's sin. When we, when we, read, when we read 1 John 3, 4, it says sin, just so I don't get it, you know, twisted for the uh, listeners. Let me um let's see, let me just get this right. Let me just go. Okay, First John three four. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is transgression of the law. Now we know that Israel was called to be righteous. We know that they fell into sin. They were transgressing the law. Now when the prophets came, each of the prophets can including Christ, who was, who was considered a prophet, regarded as a prophet, each of them preached repentance. Repentance is turning back from sin. I know you would agree with that because that's any Christian would, okay? Any yeah, yeah, yeah. Christian would. Well, let's, 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 I'm, let's, I'm not let's, done. I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. Repentance. Okay, I'm sorry. Repentance is turning back from sin. If you're going to turn back from sin, there is no other way for you to go except back to the law. Because if sin is transgression of the law, and transgression is an antonym, the opposite of comply or obey, then righteousness, which is the opposite of sin, is compliance with the law. Now, when we talk about 
um, what the Messiah preached in chapter four. What did he say? What is it, 417? He said, repent, Matthew 417, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And why wouldn't he say that? Because Israel was in sin and they were under the fourth captivity. They were supposed to be righteous because the, 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 the promise was that if you repent and turn unto the, unto the father, he spoke to his prophets. If you restore the oath, told Ezekiel, to people to Ezekiel, if you restore the oath, restore the pledge, the law, like he'll, he'll take back the curses. And this was prophesied even from all the way back from the days of Moses. One more point and then I'll, and then I'll let you weigh in. Um, when the Messiah was going through his wilderness experience, he was tempted by, by Satan. And he, at one point he says, he says um, um, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from, from the mouth of, of, of Elohim, of God. Okay, now he quoted, he quoted the very passage in Deuteronomy that says, that says, and I believe I'll read it in context. He quoted Deuteronomy 8 3. Okay, and, I, and I'll, I'll read 8, I'll read 3, and then I'll back up, and then I'll read from 1 to 3, and then I'll, and then I'll, I'll, I'll uh, conclude and hand the mic over to you. He says, verse 3, and he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. And fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did the fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Now, this was, this was um, when they were um, taking the, around the time they were taking the covenant. And he was telling them, this is why I did what I did in the wilderness. I'll back up so, you can, so everyone can, can see. <clears throat> Ver, chapter 8 verse 1 Deuteronomy all the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers and thou shalt remember the way which the Lord thy God led these led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread, alone, bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. He's speaking of the law, the prophetic word that would come from, from, from the mouth of Moses and, and all the prophets to follow. And, and, and so Christ is quoting this scripture that involves a, co a commission to follow the commandments in, his, in the wilderness experience when being tested by Satan. Christ was a, a student. He was an astute, an avid follower, an astute teacher of the law. There is no scripture. You'll be hard pressed to find any scripture where Christ says, don't follow the law, the Sinai covenant law. Okay, I, I yield the mic. Man, I wish I could do that. I huh? wish I could just talk. I wish I could just talk and get my point across. Um, I'm obviously not going to be able to do that. So I'm going to graciously just, you know, digress and bow out. You know, I, I appreciate you, man. You've been, for the oh, most no. part, Go ahead. Huh? So you're leaving. Yeah, I mean, because you, you won't let me. I mean, it's like if I disagree with your your ideology, your worldview, it's like wrong. No, you know, I mean, you're just rudely interrupting me. You won't let me finish. It's, it's just horrible, man. I, I, I thought it would be better than this, you know, so. I, I think you'll have I think you'll think differently when you when you replay this live. I think when so. I replay this, I'm not going to think I'm going to think the same thing I think right now. I already know this. I remember every single thing that was said. I remember what you said. I, I remember what you, you retracted on. You recanted. You you reneged on a lot of stuff. You, you know, tried to diverge from certain things that I was trying to set up my point on. And it, it was just, I, it, it's, it was horrible, man. It was horrible. Oh boy, oh boy. You sure you're just not uncomfortable right now? I'm very comfortable. I'm going to be even more comfortable when I finish eating this wonderful food my aunt cooked for me. <laughs> 
Oh, okay. You got food there. Oh, okay. No, no, no. That's not why I'm leaving, though. I mean, this is just, you know, the the dialogue has not, is no longer edifying now. It's like more confrontational. So I think, you know, the most righteous and, and, and bigger man, quote unquote, thing to do would be to, you know, just digress and bow out, man. I mean, I've, I've, I've gained some knowledge from you and hopefully you've, you know, gained some from me and, you know, it has been somewhat edifying and I've enjoyed it. I, I, I thank you for having me. Absolutely. I mean, you're always you're always welcome. I think um, you know it's it's really challenging when we're talking about two different ways of of seeing things, and especially like if we're you know when when we hear different perspectives, sometimes we 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 find out that we miss things or we did we you know we see things that we didn't see before, and it takes time okay. to, to to be able to be comfortable and to and to and to process that, man. And you have every right to agree with what you want to agree with and disagree with what you want to agree with. So. You know, you funny, you funny guy, man. That, that was that was that was that, that was that. I like I like that. I like the way you. Do. <laughs> well, what do you mean? You think I slighted you? Did I slight you? No, yeah, that was good. That was good. I'm gonna I'm gonna let, let you have that. I'm gonna let you have that. It's all good. It's all hey good. man, uh, well, it was a pleasure, Brian. You're always welcome back, man. Like I invite, like my, like I said before, my initiative is to create dialogues where Christians you know, can speak with, with Israelites. I think we need more of that in the community. I'm sorry if you felt like you were slighted or you were shorthanded in the conversation. I just wanted the listeners to be able to understand um, the representation of both sides. And I think patience and tolerance is needed for that. It, it, it can be challenging. Absolutely, I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree, man. And I appreciate you. And um, yeah, next time, you know, maybe, um, uh, you know, you pray for me as I pray for you. I pray that, you know, God help you with your emotions and your tolerance. So you won't, you know, just interrupt me and let me finish. And, you know, and likewise, I'll do the same for you and we'll be able to, you know, <laughs> we'll, be able to, <laughs> we'll be able to have a, you know, successful dialogue, you know, to the end, to the end. Like likewise, likewise. Well, well, peace and blessings, brother. Yes, sir. Same to you, my brother. All right. Shalom. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, um, <clears throat> so to wrap up the conversation, um, the the conversation we to to go over it. We talked about uh, um, the, it was centered around the letter of, to the Galatians. Right, so he was Christian. He had a certain perspective. I, I'm an Israelite. Um, I have a certain perspective that even other Israelites would disagree with. Okay. Um, <clears throat> before we went into the meat of the discussion, I wanted to establish that 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 each Bible reader, whether you're Christian, whether you're um, Seventh Day Adventist, Baptist, Pentecostal, um, whether you are uh, Apostolic, Episcopalian whether you're a Hebrew, whether you're a one West, whether you're considered a moderate, whether you're, <clears throat> you know, whatever, whatever belief, whatever you believe, you have a right to look in this Bible and you have a right to say, you know what, that doesn't sound like it fits. Why? Why? Because in history, we see clearly that this scripture was put together by Roman hands, Roman agency. This is a product of Rome, okay? And this is important for Israelites to understand because sometimes I see Israelites, they, they don't allow conversations to have happen because they feel like the scriptures shouldn't be questioned. Now, there's a lot of, um, a lot of place, there's a lot of distance. You, you, you negotiate what you want to dispute. You know, but if you have a doubt, if you look in the scripture, you see John 1 1. You know, it says, um, in the beginning was the word, and the world was with God, and the world was God. And Christians use that to argue the deity. But then, uh, you know, an Israelite will say, well, according to the history of this manuscript, that wasn't included. Or, you know, the, the virgin birth, the virgin, the doctrine of the virgin birth of, of Jesus is not there. So, we're, what we're doing is we are, we are, understanding that this history the history of this thing of this collection of books we call the bible we are recognizing that it is a product of 
the hands of men who were ambitious, who were morally compromised, okay, and who were historic enemies of Israel. And when you can honestly acknowledge that, you won't really fault the next man for saying, you know what, I don't believe uh, this, this scripture I question. You know, as long as he can provide the documentation and say, you know what, because this happened in this, this manuscript a long time ago, that wasn't there. So this is why I disagree. As long as he provides reason, ample reason, it, you know, using sensibility, like we shouldn't fault each other because this is a deception. And this was part of the curses. Like when we talk about the Bible and we talk about how there are mistakes, how there is, when we confront the reality of, of, um, of deception and, and error with its fallibility of scripture, we are acknowledging a reality. And to say that, um, to sort of presume that Elohim wouldn't let it happen. Well, why wouldn't he let it happen? Why wouldn't he? He was seeking punishment for Israel. He was seeking re revenge, vengeance for his name. So confusion, <laughs> confusion is, is, it was part of the, of the deal. It was part of the consequences for not following what we were supposed to follow in the first place. All right. Um, <clears throat> let's see what I want to go over really quick before we conclude. I think it's just really important to to maintain op openness and patience when discussing these things. Um, so we went into Paul, um, and I so giving a sort of um, prologue to my criticism of Paul. I wanted him to understand that that's why I questioned Paul. And then I we we didn't really get to go in depth with Paul. I, I really think he was emotionally triggered, and and it's just it's just really uncomfortable when you start to confront the reality these, these things that maybe you you know if, if you're a christian maybe you didn't see him before and now because nobody wants to believe that what they believe is wrong we don't want to think that we've had it wrong all along especially if we're christian this 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 trigger emotional trigger happens in the community and we need to really sort of be mindful of it because because we're all waking up and we're all coming out, most of us by and large are coming out of Christianity. And so it's like when, when you're, in, you're in water, you're wading in water, just call it the water of Christianity. You've been bathing in Christianity for however long you've been bathing in it. And all of a sudden somebody said, hey, get out of that pool. Get out of that Christian water. Come on, come on out and dry off. And immediately, immediately you begin to dry off. What, is, what do you feel? It's cold. When you get out of pools, how often are we, how do we have the chills? You know, you want to get back in. You want to get back in that water. And then you're wet. You're wet. You're all sticky and wet, and you need a towel. So we're all wiping this Christianity off of us. And that's a very, that can be a very complicated thing. Because now you're parsing out what you think for yourself, what you think is the truth. And we're all sort of trying to follow the spirit, you know, which, which, which takes being honest. I mean, we can't follow the spirit of truth unless we're being honest. And, and the point is, is that some, some truths are really uncomfortable to confront. And sometimes they take courage. And sometimes it takes time for us to build up the courage, right? Like, it's very uncomfortable. This whole process of washing Christianity off of us, being, you know, confronting our mistake, confronting the reality that, coming to the realization that it's not your fault. It's not your fault. You've been taught a certain thing. You don't have to internalize any shame. We all have to acknowledge that we were deceived and that's not our fault. The most important thing is keeping our eyes forward and being honest enough with ourselves to say, you know what, that may have been wrong, but that's okay because I'm going to get it right. And I'm going to know why I had it wrong 
And when I move forward to talk with other people, I'm going to be able to explain for them why I had it wrong. But I had to learn I was wrong first, right? You can always get it right. There's always room to get it right. All, you know, but, it, but we, have to, we have to keep in step with that truth, with that honesty. We have to keep that spirit of honesty and be willing to say, to be honest with ourselves and say, you know, we didn't have it right. So <clears throat> I think when we talk, when we're talking to Hebrew, when we're talking to Israelites, when we're talking to Christians, just dealing with that, that dynamic, that, that whole complex psychological roller coaster, you know, that, that can really kind of, depending on where a person's at, it can, it can be a fruitful discussion or it can get a little turbulent like you, like we saw today. Um, and I, I truly think that that was the issue. As you, as you can see, it, it, you know, if you go back to the beginning of the, of the, um, of this discussion, you can see that we were, we were agreeing on a lot. We were finding points of agreement. Okay. And then slowly as we start, started to close in on the central issue, then it was like, wait a minute. Now you're, now we're in that deep, dark, we're in that deep, dark portion. We're in that deep, dark, uh, that deep, dark space where, you know, we haven't thought about these things and I'm not ready to decide. And I haven't, I haven't decided that it was wrong. And now I'm uncomfortable because we're here, <laughs> you know, and now I'm, I'm not feeling comfortable and I'm going to show you, you know, that, that's a very normal thing. Um, <clears throat> and so like, I think um, just to sort of wrap up when we're dealing with, with brothers and sisters, we come to this point where we're tempted to really get drawn into the emotional push and pull It's emotional time people don't want to think they're wrong when they when when you sort of show them that they might be wrong show them some that there's things that they may have missed it's like how now they're like how dare you now it's i'm uncomfortable i'm expressing my uncomfortability voices raised um i thoughts are misrepresented miscommunications happen and because the emotions are all keyed up that could be a very complicated thing um, but I think as we keep in step with, with sort of this humility and sort of kind of understanding, right, understanding that this person I'm talking to is in a, in a comfortable space, okay, and I don't have to lash out like they're lashing out at me. Now, of course, <clears throat> that's, I, I'm, just, I'm just giving you guys this as an alternative, something to explore. You know, we, we all sort of at some point or another, none of us are saints, we, we get wrapped up because we're managing our own emotions ourselves. I mean, me, I'm, and, and I, I'm, I'm really no saint. Like, you can find me saying some of the, like, you can find me just, like, really going off on people in the rumble room. But um, at the end of the day, you have a choice. Like, we have choices. We can, we can choose to understand where, where Christians are coming from. If you're a Christian, you can choose to understand where Hebrews are coming from. Um, but this is the beauty of really kind of discussing things like this. Um, so we kind of, we kind of um, went away from Paul. I think he kind of got this uh, uncomfortable with, you know, maybe some, you know, things that are kind of sounding like they make sense. So he kind of, he wanted to divert the discussion into the teachings of, of Christ. We talked about Christ and then he, he, he couldn't come to the notion uh uh, he couldn't he couldn't rest easy with the with the notion that Christ was a Sinai covenant law teacher. But the nice thing about being able to discuss these guys is that regardless of how how quick your discussion ends or how long your discussion lasts, you have the chance to plant a seed. And when you plant the seed, an idea, you plant it in the mind. You a person can't forget it. If it's real, if it's a true, if it's the truth. It's going to stick. It's going to stick in their mind like a splinter. Now, of course, if it, if it doesn't make sense, you know, if it's if it's attached to some irrational um, set of beliefs or some irrational argument, they have reason to dismiss it because it's like, oh, that doesn't make sense. But the, the true things that you're able to say, the true things that you're able to say, and that you're able to relate to them, you know, if you can keep them calm enough and communicate the truth, do not despair. Don't despair that your words will have fallen on deaf ears. Because if, if it's meant to be, they'll think about it. 
you know each of us each of us wants to sort of we we have this dream of of hitting the home run knocking it out of the park right bringing all the runners in right lights crowd standing cheering yay we did it points on the board yay. but sometimes you just need to put the runner on base you dig what i'm saying sometimes you just need to hit that little bunt and move the runners along and that takes that takes i think a, a spiritual maturity to say you know what maybe i'm not here maybe i'm not meant to to hit the grand slam right now maybe not this outing maybe i just need to put the the bat on that ball and move the runners along i would i would imagine that that is the case more often than not and it takes patience it takes maturity <clears throat> that it takes patience that that comes with maturity knowing that hey you know what? i don't have to be the star player for now i'll just i'll just plant this seed i think when we realize that a lot of the harsh words a lot of the you know <clears throat> the, the the emotional swings we take at people they really will really start to have less and less of those like oh, okay like maybe it wasn't maybe i don't have to persuade him or her this time around maybe i just need to give him that extra thing to think about and a quick recommendation um before i get off well while i'm recommending things i think we should also consider um oh man what was i gonna say <clears throat> oh man moving up oh man i just went blank but um <clears throat> yeah just 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 knowing that you know what i don't have to convince them maybe i oh yes this is what i was going to say finding points of agreement when we're talking to people it doesn't have to be highly contentious it doesn't have to be a highly contentious discussion from start to finish now you can you can bet that at some point when we're talking with individuals that have different opinions and different angles on things there's going to be some disagreement and you can prep for that you can see it coming you can you can brace for it you can plan how you want to react instead of letting the situation dictate how you're going to react but i think as a general principle whether you're christian or or hebrew you can benefit from this focus on finding the things that you agree on focus on finding the points that you agree on that you have consensus with that way you can build a rapport build a strong um base for your conversation versus when you come out disagreeing then you both are emotionally on guard and you can't even agree about you can you you're so too, so busy protecting and everybody's image conscientious and they they don't want to then you don't want to agree at all you don't want to find any points of agreement <laughs> you know it just becomes uh completely adversarial i think that um if we if we step in patience and humility and we focus on finding the things that we agree on and really sort of bringing our you know our interlocutor the people that were the person that we're talking with to a point where they realize that maybe there's some inconsistencies maybe we don't have to be so direct maybe we can point them to a scripture and say well how does how does this mean what you think it means because and then and then just let them explain often times a person will sort of like run themselves in circles because it wasn't what they thought it was and i think it's a little bit more gentler because it allows them to feel the sense that you know what maybe i am wrong without you saying you're wrong you know it's different when you realize you're wrong and nobody says you're wrong versus when somebody says you're wrong then it's like then it's like you 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 set them on guard or you're or even maybe yourself is put on guard and you want to prove right away that it's but you're not wrong and we sort of bring individuals to this point where they have to where they have to decide for themselves pointing to them to a scripture that says please explain for me how this means what you think it means and allow them to explain 
<clears throat> I mean, at, at the very least, you're going to end up with, with a with a good uh, <laughs> with a good laugh. I mean, the point is, you don't have to you don't have to you don't have to say you're wrong and you're going to go to hell. You need to repent. Like you don't have to say that. I mean, at the, at the very least, you know, they'll start to they'll figure those things out in private. But in the meantime, you've brought them to a place where a, a scripture that, you know, a point in scripture where they can say to themselves, you know what? You know what? Maybe I had it wrong. I'm going to think about this. They may never say thank you. They may never say, you know, oh, you were right. But it's it's I mean, unless you're looking for uh gratification and, and, and praise from men, then it'll be a big deal. But if if you can if you can sort of resign yourself to to trust that this person's gonna think about it, you'll have a lot more pleasant interactions. And then you'll probably have a lot of good laughs because it's really funny when people kind of just think they have it right and they try to they kind of run themselves in the circles and do pirouettes, <laughs> you know rhetorical pirouettes and don't make, you know. Um, but with that, guys, um, I hope this uh, discussion was edifying. I hope the monologue after the discussion was edifying. Um, <clears throat> this should be on the Rumble Room channel. If you're not part of the Rumble Room, join the Rumble Room. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the Rumble Room on YouTube, hit the like and subscribe. Um, uh, I do this for the love. I love... Uh, arguing with you guys over scripture and reasoning the scriptures um, and um, just, you know, making scripture part of culture again. All right. Uh, I hope you guys have a blessed evening and, and I will talk to you soon. Peace, light, shalom.